From Chelsea breaking the British transfer record in back to back windows with the signing of Enzo Fernandez and now the Ecuadorian midfielder Moise Caicedo to the club having more money spent than all of La Liga, it's left people asking one question. How can Chelsea spend so much? And in this video, we're going to answer exactly that. Under Abramovich's reign, Chelsea was known for spending money, but since Torbolu's consortium took the helm in 2022, the club was already nearing a billion pounds spent on transfer fees. With UEFA having a set of rules in place known as financial fair play, people were wondering how the club could possibly be complying with these rules. FFP was brought in to create a level playing field for clubs, and its aim is to prevent clubs from spending outside of their means to fund success. Given the sheer amount of money spent, most would assume Chelsea is spending outside of their means to find success and thus are breaching these FFP rules. However, the owner Torboli discovered a loophole in the system that's enabled them to spend at a rate never seen before. If you take a look at Chelsea's player contracts, you'll notice these are often six year deals or above, and this is crucial in enabling Chelsea's massive spending. This is because of amortization which is the actual process of gradually writing off the initial cost of an asset. In the Enzo Fernandez deal, for example, he got Chelsea 121 million euros. If this fee was spread across a standard five-year deal, it would appear as a hefty 24.2 million euros each year on the books. However, as his actual deal was nine and a half years long, it appears it's just under 13 million euros. Now technically, this length of contract doesn't comply with FIFA's regulations, as FIFA outlines that contracts should be no longer than 5 years. But the rulebook also states, contracts of any other length shall only be permitted if consistent with national laws. And as there are no national laws in the UK governing the length of contracts, Chelsea are free to do as they please. UEFA, however, have taken action against this strategy, with them releasing a statement saying that the amortisation of a player's registration will be limited to 5 years. But of course, Chelsea had a dismal season last year, which saw them finish 12th place in the Premier League, meaning they aren't in any of UEFA's European competitions this season. This works in Chelsea's favour, as the club won't be affected this season by the newly imposed amortisation limit. Although, even if they return to Europe, it appears that Chelsea remain committed to longer contracts, as they believe they give players greater security and the club more protection on the value of their assets. Because of this trick involving amortisation, selling players has made balancing the books much easier, as the fee they're sold for is added onto the books in its entirety instantly. For example, Kai Havertz was sold for 65 million and as his remaining amortized book value was over 28 million his transfer resulted in over 36 million pounds profit which balances out the amortized value of a few of their signings combined selling academy players like mason mount is even better at balancing the books this is because there's zero initial cost and therefore no amortized value on a player promoted from the academy so when they're sold, it counts as pure profit. Now of course, Chelsea's academy is one of the best in the country and fans are naturally more connected to the players that have come from there, so selling them is slightly controversial. Despite this, there's no denying that selling them is very helpful in Chelsea's aim to fast track their rebuilds while still complying with FFP. Now the next part behind Chelsea being able to spend what they have is the fact that their wage bill has actually been coming down. This is because they've offloaded high earners such as Koulibaly, who was earning £295,000 a week whilst buying young players with higher potential. Younger players equal cheaper wages, as they're unlikely to demand as much as a player in their prime. As a result of these lower value deals, the average wage bill has been reduced to between £70,000 and £75,000 a week. This strategy takes inspiration from the sport of baseball, something Torboli has had a long-standing interest in, with him owning 20% of the LA Dodgers. In baseball, many have recognised that rather than paying a superstar towards the end of his peak a massive amount for a short period, it's better to lock in an emerging star for 9 or 10 years on slightly lower annual wages. Torboli has taken his philosophy often seen in baseball and applied it to football with the contracts he's been handing out greatly contrasting the contracts in the Roman Abramovich era. Under Russia's ownership, base wages were well above the market rate across the board, something that has since changed with Bodie and Clear Lake being determined to bring the club's salary commitments down to competitive market level. Now of course, this heavy spending and on contracts isn't without risk, as there's a possibility some of these players won't live up to their potential and the expectations Chelsea have of them. However, Chelsea's faith in Pochettino, who's renowned for helping the development of young players, and also believes they've identified the right players to help bring Chelsea back to glory. 